Rivers APC sends warning shots to Buhari, Nek and Bola Tinubu. And supporters show strength as political rallies hold across Nigeria. Tonight, we discuss solidarity marches and their significance to the 2023 elections. This is Fast Politics. I am Mary Anako. The All Progressive Congress APC in River State has sent warning shots to President Muhammad Buhari, the party's presidential candidate Ahmed Bola Tinubu, and the National Executive Council, urging them to address their grievances or lose their participation in next year's presidential election. At an interactive session convened by the party's National Vice Chairman, South South Victor Giadam, Sunday, uh, on Sunday night in Port Harcourt, uh, River State, stakeholders accused the party leaders of working against the interests of Rivers APC by their actions and inactions. And joining us to discuss this live is Subeye Eli. He's a legal practitioner and a member of the All Progressive Congress in River State. Mr. Eli, so good to have you join us. Good evening. Good evening, Mary. It's my pleasure uh, joining you tonight. Good evening, Nigerian. Great. Let's start by looking at the tone of this and, of course, the basis for which the APC uh, in River State is um, putting out this warning. Um, one, would, one would have said that um, the APC at this point will be trying to put its house together, being that many, uh, one of your very staunch um, former chairmen had moved and, of course, moved to the PDP. And then we also saw Senator Magnus Abbey moving to the SDP. Um, what exactly, first and foremost, is the state of the APC in River State? Uh, thanks for your question. Um, the APC, like every other political party registered about the Nigerian Constitution, is um, not a secret cause, and therefore there is the freedom of entry and freedom of exit. People move in accordance with their message interest. So uh, proceeding from that perspective, one would say that those who left, probably left not because the APC had collapsed, but maybe because they could not realize their expectations vis-a-vis -vis being on the ballot for one office or the other. Uh, or maybe they left because some ethnic interests uh, became a higher calling. But whatever is the reason, there have also been enough entries between then and now, except uh, so that um, you do not hear too much of those noise making because um, it's not in our nature to advertise what will catch the big fishes. But going back to the issue you raised, I think it's worth to proceed. Talking about putting a house in order. You recall that on Sunday, the National Vice Chairman South South, Chief Victor, somebody get on, led a full executive committee of the party at the general level. And now they've been going around the six South South states to check the health of the party in each of the state chapters. So when I arrived for Sakot on Sunday, you expect that the state chairman, Chief Maker McGain, and uh, the governorship candidate, architect Toy Patrick Cole, who happens to be the state coordinator in the presidential campaign council for Asiwaju, Molak Machinibu, will raise issues of concern such as the did. And honest party man will do that. If they had gone to Delta State and then they do see the crossover. The issues cannot be the same because we haven't seen APC governors come to those states to have no with opposition for any reason. So in the state, the situation could have been different. And honest party men are duty bound to lay the complaints at the right quarters. And, and who would better take the reports of the state chapter than the zonal 
chairman to the National Security Committee, of course, to the president who is the leader of the party. So it was within our constitutional uh, rights to file complaints, as well because those governors are leaders of the party in their own right. They're members of NEC, and they know that the action flout Article 21 of the APC Constitution. What exactly are these actions that you make reference to? Because I'm looking at this statement that was made by Mr. Gyadam. First and foremost, he talks about the fact that um, um, the, the, the government, or rather the leadership of the APC is being seen to, uh, the leadership of the party's uh, flag bearer rather, um, are seen to be hobnobbing with uh, Governor Yesun Wike. Uh, and do you see this as anti-party? Um, because of course, Governor Yesun Wike is a PDP member. Um, why is that so much of a bother for the people of River State? Of course, it, 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 it don't need rocket science to understand what that means. Article 21 of the APC Constitution lays very bare to the practical details what constitutes anti-party. What do I do to undermine the interest of the party in the favor of an opposition party qualifies as anti-party? For instance, the last time I was in this program, you were talking about another round of court cases that the opposition PDP led by Yeson Wiki have filed again to delete the APC from the ballot. So when these governors come to the United States to meet Wiki, are they discussing Wiki withdrawing those cases, or they come to discuss about Wiki supporting as well as president? Now, if you don't know how that works us, then you're only a party man. You, if you go to Lagos, for instance, let's assume without conceding, that Ruto Amechi was the flag bearer of this, the APC for 2023 presidential elections. He arrives in Lagos and then goes to look for Jimmy Abadji or Chief Olubade George to seek support to the total exclusion of the APC in Lagos. It does not face the party secretary, it does not see the party, party leader, it does not consult anybody, and goes walking straight in bed with PDP leaders in Lagos State. The reaction will not be different. So we have not done anything if we are sounding alarm bells. The same thing happened in 2020. So are, are you saying and, that because Bola Metinu is seeking for, you know, to run for president uh, in the country, he should, um, one way or the other, be uh, in enmity with members of other political parties who seem to be his friend, devoid of the fact that they are members of other political parties? They should, he should not in any way have conversations with them, whether it be for political reasons or not? Mayor, that's absolutely wrong. You are misunderstanding me. Well, Nobody's talking about anonymity here. Nobody's talking about anonymity here. We must be able to draw a clear line between pursuing support from other Nigerians for a ticket and doing so to undermine the local chapter of the party. I cite an example here. That's a speaker. The man they come to meet, meets a party that is already in court with virtually every political party in the United States. It's in court with the APC, the PDP is in court with SDP, the PDP is in court with the Labour Party. Go around this country, go around the six states in Abuja. If you find any matter in any federal high court, filed by any PDP state chapter against other parties, only in the United States. And so because he's worked in 2019 and we're off the ballot and become an easy right for him, he's back again. So then the state of the PDP, that's when Akao was in the federal court, leading half assembly candidates who were members, leading local government chairman, and the party who is he was there, even central candidate. So they have an issue to protect. So why would an FPC leader come to the state while he goes to woo in some weekend and others to support him? We we'll never check on the party, the local channel party, to know how we're faring. He won't undermine us because we're chasing an interest. For God's sake, this is an election where the electoral act has made it so easy for Nigerians to exercise the power of the ballot when they, when they choose to do so. We have other pretenders parents in the field. With our Siwaji Bolat and his handlers be comfortable to find the APC River State of not being with P2P openly, of not being with Africa Baka openly, 
other official candidates. It's not done. So we have filed the report, and we hope that Victor Gerdam, the national vice chairman, passed out. We take the message home, and then we we'll watch their reaction. You know, Harold Wilson, former British Prime Minister, warned. He said, in politics, a week is like eternity. We have from now to February. So much can happen. If we think our interest does not matter, then, then I, I, think, I think that whoever thinks so <laughs> is if a surprise. Okay. Do not forget, there's no state chapter, and I stand to be corrected, there's no state chapter of this party that paid the price that the APC University has paid from 2015 to date. No. And if anybody thinks what exactly, that we can be taken for granted. What exactly is the price that you're talking about? Because you sound like... Um... Um, someone was crucified. But then explain to us what you mean by the APC and River State have paid the price up until now. What exactly is the price that they've had to pay? I, I, I will waste the time. I will numerate it my fingertips. Miriam, I come from Begema Low Government Area. During just membership registration in 2014, when somebody was shot and killed in a Boroma compound with five Bakana at the Australian grounds. Because that king was so gory, his elder brother, Ombo Ombi, aka Master Rhymes, after a while, got disgusted and defected from the party. Lives are sick. Before President Bode arrived, we were set to flag off his campaign in 2015. Contingents arriving at the Adventure of Mexico Stadium from Canada local government, from the local government, local government from our good fellow government, were ambushed and shot out. This president visited the Kelsey House in Special Mission Hospital to commiserate with the injured and gave them promises. Now, because we could not retain government after 2015, given the circumstances of the general factor, we couldn't appoint an attorney general who will prosecute those known criminals who are behind those murders. The APC does not understand that until we have the government house, those murders are walking away. And those things discourage the people from bringing their chest out to fight by the party. So you're saying that the APC has to be in power for justice to actually reign in River State. So is there no judiciary? Of course, I'm of sorry, course, I'm sorry. The, the judiciary that is in River State, is it a PDP judiciary? Are you telling me that the lawyers who no, uh, make uh, up uh, the uh, bench, me, including you, are supposed Miriam. to be people who only Miriam. understand justice in light of a particular political party? Are you throwing all Miriam. your colleagues under the bus here? Miriam, the Attorney General of River State and Commission for Justice is an office created by the Constitution, but appointed by a governor who is partisan, who comes from a political party. So if the Attorney General of River State fails to prosecute crimes reported and police are investigated, what do you do? The Attorney General has morally prosecute powers. Again, I ask, Under you're telling me that the whole judiciary in River State is at the whims no, 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 and caprices no, of one about man the who's an Attorney General, a government appointee. I'm trying to understand where you're going with this. Please help me. Yes, no, no Mayor, listen, listen. Before you talk about the judiciary, there's a key to the judiciary. The Attorney General of the state, by law, will take about the criminal proceedings, even if the police commences it. That's his power of morally prosecute. The Attorney General has the right to commence, to take over, to continue, or discontinue the criminal proceeding. So if the Attorney General comes and fails to prosecute, you cannot prosecute. And for what I've seen in this country, the Federal Attorney General cannot prosecute crimes that happen in the state. You cannot say the Attorney General prosecuting murder cases. So, so, so what this means court. is that the Attorney General of the Federation would only prosecute matters that would benefit the APC government other than every other Nigerian. If this is what you're saying is happening again, in River State, again, this is wrong. what you think is obtainable. No, because again, whatever you say, Sumay, one way or yes. the other, is, is going to be interpreted as what's happening across the country. Because if you are making a case that the Attorney General in your state uh, and the whole judiciary is at his whims and caprices. You're also, in, in, in turn, saying that that's what's, what's obtainable everywhere else, even at the federal level. You're wrong. And let me tell you why you're wrong. Well, well, well I, that, that's why I'm asking there you that crimes. whatever explanation you're giving me now, you have to be careful now, to me, make sure that it is me, legit and it's let right. Me, let me explain to you why I said you're wrong. 
Maryland, there are, in the constitution of this country, there are offenses triable by different courts. There are also offenses that certain categories of persons cannot, cannot issue action on. A murder in a state is triable by the police and the attorney general of that state, not the federal attorney general. So if I say that under this government from 2015 to now, Riverside has had two attorney generals appointed by Wiki, the late Chief of Emmanuel Lagoma, and now Professor Zakir Sadango, SN, both them, the other one was an SN, and not one person has been put on trial. Don't forget that in this matter we're talking about here, in 2015, yes, Wiki, instead of an action challenging the jurisdiction of the River State Election Official Tribunals be moved to Abuja instead of River State. Now, in the Supreme Court, in dismissing that challenge jurisdiction, we on the note of finality, said that River State was, quote, a theater of war before, during, and after the 2015 election. So, if judges cannot seek in safety to, have, to adjudicate on election petition, how much more hapless voters? So these are the issues that have been there. Okay. They are not novel. Let's come, back. Let, let, let's come back to party politics here. Now you're holding, you and members of your political party are holding the feet of Mr. President to the fire. I'd like to quote exactly um, what your group said. Now you, they, they said that uh, they're calling on the national chairman and President Mahmoud Buhari to call the presidential candidate to order. Um, and, your, and, and the group also said that um, the president and the candidate should stop dividing the APC in River State for personal interest. And you said that the APC in River State is a family. I'd like to ask again, what's the, um, I mean, since the leader of the APC in your state, of course, the, in the person of um, the former minister uh, for transport, um, Vice Honorable Rotimi uh, Mechi, we haven't really heard after the um, APC presidential primaries from him. What is he doing as the leader of the party to um, guard against what you are all worried about? I mean, should he not be the one who's putting the house together? Uh, he should. He has a. He used to be an, an aide to Mr. President, and he should be the one leading the charge for the presidential campaign in your state. So why are you um, directing your aggression to the candidates when you have somebody who's supposed suppo supposedly a go between? I don't understand. Richmond Mitchie is has the leader of your party. Isn't right. he? he has the same rights to that house in the APC. He was a minister. He was the governor. He's the leader of a party. Nothing in the APC constitution says that only he can raise complaints to the court of his council. But he is the leader the of the party. The former isn't governor he? of Lagos State, excuse me, the former governor of Lagos State, who is now a presidential standard bearer, is a member of NEC. And in terms of discipline, there are procedures. He knows. What the party leadership has done through the state chairman and the candidate, uh, governorship candidate, who happens to be the coordinator of Asimaj Bolak and in the PCC for River State, to echo, is very much in order. They have routed the complaint to the national vice chairman, South South. So we're moving from the state to the federal level. It's not like we have to take it to national level. Mm. It's the appropriate route. Nothing has gone wrong. Is that something to do with Rotary and Mechi? Or whether I said the team or not said the team? He ran the primaries and came second. The vice president who came third is not discussing, he's not complaining about something in the good state. The, the Senate president who came fourth is not discussing what's happening in the European state because these issues are not there. Now, so if you happen to the United States, it must not be Rotary and Mechi that will talk. Both with the constitutional powers to do so have spoken. Okay. And that's what is germane. We should not look at the messenger. Let's look at the message. Okay. We saw these things coming in 2020 in those states. The governor, who was an APC governor, was forced to abdicate to leave the party to go to the PDP against all warnings. At the end of the day, Governor Baski left to the ticket, went to the PDP, and defeated us because we were not listening. Well, so why don't you have to massage anybody's ego? Okay. We're simply saying that 
when we raise the red flag, you must listen. Because we too have alternatives in presidential candidates in other parties. Okay. We can also vote for okay. votes. Okay. Let me go back to some of the things that were credited again to this in this warning, uh, warning shot to the neck and of course Tinubu. I'd like to quote a statement uh, here um, directly. Um, in in Inas, Inasia West, I hope I got his name right. Now he said Tinubu cannot. In Inasia sitting... West. Yes, in Inasia West said that um, Tinubu cannot be sitting on the fence anymore when it comes to River State. He should come out and say where he belongs, so that we are that we who are still in the party know how we move. He also said, we're here ready to win election, but Tinubu must make a clear statement in River State. So I ask, how on the ground is the APC in River State? You lost elections in 2015, you lost elections in 2019. How certain are you that you can win River State for Tinubu? Well, let us assume, let us assume that um, you, don't, you don't follow River's politics. When they ask the question, how on ground are we? That's, a very, that's, a, very the flawed, election that's lost. a very flawed assumption, but I'd let you, no, I'd let yeah, you slide. No, let, let me clear it out. In 2015, we ran an election against the sitting president, who had the proxy in the current governor. The facts are there. I don't want to rehash it. In 2019, the court stopped us. So between us and this PDP, by the stopping his chest at the owner of River State, that's really, really not been a direct contest. We adopted the candidate of the AAC 24 hours of the election 2019 in the first of Virginia, Bipo and all of the South South states had the elections concluded. In 21 days, I never could not declare it's a wicked winner. We were busy writing results at the backyard to declare a winner. We don't want to go through that. In 2016, we had rerun elections in at least two thirds of the parliamentary seats, National Assembly and State Assembly. At the end of the last count, we had two senators. We had how many members of the House of Representatives, how many members of the House of Assembly. Is that the party says on the ground? In, in 2018, we had a runoff election, the by election rather, in Port Harcourt 63. Okay? The INEC could not declare results to this day. Because we are we are, so, we are so What does that amount to? In does 2019, it amount to a win? In 2019, the judiciary is on. INEC is unable to announce the result. But I'm just, I'm clearly just asking. I'm, can you certainly say that you will be able to deliver the state for uh, Tinubu? Marian, this it's a yes or no is question. About... It's a yes or no question, Mr. Eli. No, it's not a yes or no question. Can you or this can not, you not? This is not, this is not the script written from the back room of somebody. The voters have a right to vote. And that is the umpire. The outcome of the results will show on the, from each year, up. So it's not for us to sit and tell you, Yes, we can deliver, not to deliver. Okay. It's both of the minors. You okay. do that at the peril. All right. Well, so where Eli As for Inasia West, Inasia okay. West is a candidate for the House of Representatives. After the Toro, after the Toro Federal Constituency. Okay. His election will happen the same day, without our civil adjustment, at my team. So he's within his, he's, he's right on time to decide, to ask questions, where does the candidate stand? So he will know I have to campaign. All right. It's as simple as ABC. So we're, we're out of time, but I want to say thank you. So we, Eli is a legal practitioner, also a member of the uh, APC in River State. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me as always. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break now. When we return, we will be talking about uh, solidarity matches that has been taking place across the country and outside the country. And we're talking about the significance uh, that he will have on the elections come 2023. Stay with us, we'll be right back.